Welcome to another Facehammer show. It's me, Russ the Face Veal, and in this show, a bit different, I'm going to be talking about Warhammer Underworlds, um, specifically the Gnarlwood box set. Um, Games Workshop sent me a copy, so thank you very much for that. Um, I do appreciate that. Um, now, I wanted to talk a little bit about it. I know it's unusual for our channel. Normally, we do Age of Sigma match play rules only and talk about like tournaments and things like that. Now, I do actually have a board game group that meet on a regular basis and we play lots of different games stuff from awaken realms you know i love those games um we do role play lots of different board games you know dice throne uh fantasy brawl we sometimes delve into things like um our latest kickstarters you know descent anything and everything over the years um star wars legion imperial assault things like that um <clears throat> you know tainted grail you know you name it we've we've probably had a go at it um we play lots of different board games now back in the day when um underworld's shade spire came out we did all dabble we all got warbands we played quite regularly we played quite a bit on a thursday night and um touched it since and there's been lots of releases and a lot of my friends are a lot more casual with gaming than i am and um they never intention to play tournaments and i think the problem is is that the game kind of got a little bit bloaty with cards and deck building and then it was a bit confused about what was legal what wasn't legal and games which have kind of done a bit of catch up after a big push and it looked like a lot of support had dropped off obviously i know covid didn't help when there wasn't organized play that kind of hurt the game quite a bit but even their online resources like the website wasn't updated the card builder they had wasn't updated and it kind of felt a little bit unsupported and i think one thing i would say about games workshop games um, especially the specialist stuff they seem to go in this cyclical release where they hype it release it forget it then hype the next one in six months time and I've seen that dangerous pattern appear with Underworlds, um, which kind of put me off. I was like, well, I'm not into it, so I, I don't want to play it casually because it's moving so fast. I can't keep up with it, and I keep up with Age of Sigma. That's enough for me. I don't have enough time. The game's great, and I know it's not an indictment on how good or bad the gameplay of the game is. It's more just the product release and the, the confused approach. Um, and that's my personal feelings on it. I don't know if you agree with me. You can let me know below if you disagree. Um, but the reason I'm doing this video is because I want to give it another go because I've invested a lot in the year, over the years in all the box sets, all the models. Um, and there's a big push now to tell us that it's the perfect board game night accompaniment game. Um, they've streamlined the formats. They've streamlined the rules. Um, they're going to support it. So I want to believe... I want to believe the hype, I want to get on board, and I want to enjoy it and use some of the products that I've bought over the years, and um, yeah, enjoy enjoy have a few games of Underworlds, and um, I think for me it's a great game for travelling, if, you, if you're going somewhere it, it doesn't take up a lot of space, it's a deck of cards, a few models, um, some counters and a board, easily goes in a backpack, easily goes in a you know, your suitcase if you're going abroad. I mean, I, I remember I took the early copy to Portugal and we played next to the pool on, on a coffee table. You know, that perfect. So you can you can do all that. Um, all the models are amazing. The art and the quality of the components is amazing. Um, the gameplay is great. If you're into adversarial competitive play games, it's, it's fantastic. And I, that's the one thing I will say, and I'll wrap that up again in my thoughts at the end. Um, by a previous experience with my gaming club, we were quite casual and actually we like co-op games. So if your game group is very much don't like playing first with there's winners, losers, and it's very much cooperative, then maybe it's not the game for you because the multiplayer mode of Underworlds is pretty bad from my memory. You had this quite big board and because you get limited activations and models could only move once, you never really got to interact with anyone. And there was a lot of stuff where you could score points by sitting in your own home base and, and it was just very boring. Now they have actually addressed this with some wall bands that can move around the board fast and also they've changed the movement rules in this edition so maybe that will help it. Um, I am tempted to give the multiplayer a go but it does really shine when it's one versus one. That's how the game's designed. Um, you could have multiple games on the go, do a round robin, things like that but think of it more like a Blood Bowl than uh, a multiplayer game because it does have a multiplayer mode but I don't know. I will give it a go uh, with a game group but um, yeah, I, I would just caveat that and say look don't expect it to be different it's not a complete reinvention it's just it's a streamlined tidy up and some accessibility brought into the game <clears throat> one of the strengths of underworlds for me is the fact they do remove things 
Um, things like Age of Sigmar's got very bloated over the years where they just keep adding and they don't take away. With Underworlds, they have added a lot of mechanics, but they tend to take away decks and warbands that you have aren't invalidated because they've started with this rivals deck format, uh, which is very clever and it's probably the best way to play the game. So I'm going to talk about the box contents. Um, we've got... Um, We've got this is the box contents you can see it's a book some counters some cards some models board the models are unpainted and unassembled so if you're not a games workshop player which i'd be surprised you found this channel but welcome and you're more a board game player you're probably used to the pieces being assembled um now what they have done they have tried to remove the barrier of having to be a hobbyist by making them very easy to build now i will talk about that when i do the unboxing now because uh, there are some top tips for making them go together a lot easier, and I'll explain those now. So, this is the box. So, you open the box up. These would be sealed in a pack. You've got the boards. Now, these are the boards that you play on. Actually, they're double-sided, high print quality. Um, the hexes are your squares. You've got starting squares. These are different types of terrain. And the boards are part of your setup and your warband. So, you pick a board... And when you set up, you have a sequencing and you put them end to end or side to side. You've got to line up so many hexes. So where the hexes are at the edges, you can actually create different layouts. It's quite a clever mechanic. When it first came out, it was kind of revolutionary for these kind of skirmish combat games. And I really enjoyed it. I think I think that I will say this. The game's design is excellent. If, if you've not played Underworld, the game's design is just really, really top notch. Um, the balance was amazing when I played it. I don't know what it's like now. I I know there's been a lot of issues with some cards, but they do remove them, which is nice because Age of Sigmar, they don't tend to remove anything. They just FAQ it, and I like the fact they do remove things. Um, and you get a natural removal as the sets go through. So um, you get your counters, pretty good quality card, you know, nice, not good print quality. It's what you expect from Games Workshop. You don't, you don't expect um, a poor quality uh, components with Games Workshop games. Um, they just don't do poor quality. And that's one of the things I like about Games Workshop uh, products is they are high quality. Um, you've got your instructions now. Pretty simple. Like when you compare it to other sets, uh, very simplistic. Now my top tip for assembling any Underworlds Warband. Um, so these are your push fit models. They've all got these pins my top tip <coughs> is if you're going to glue them is to take a pair of clippers i use these these are quite expensive high quality ones i wouldn't buy the new gw ones by the way go get some on amazon and all i do is i'll snip the end of the pin off now the reason i do that is because there isn't they're so well engineered there isn't really any room for error or glue so if you snip the end off, there's still enough pin to locate, but it you do get a, a snug push and you don't get gaps around the pieces where they push together. So if you're going to paint them, that's my top tip. If you just want to push them together to play, then you, you probably don't care and you probably want to make sure you can pull them apart. The other top tip is if you've got one of these, is the mold line scraping tool is to put it in the hole you notice it fits pretty much perfectly and just give it a spin and that <coughs> just widens the pin slightly so it makes it a looser fit and again it does that natural thing so you just go like that you give it a twirl and that just scrapes the inside of the peg out and allows that fit to be snugger so that means you shouldn't need to gap fill you shouldn't get issues with the push fitting uh, they might get a bit loose and they might fall apart if you're trying to just push them and you don't want to glue them. But I always use glue. And again, glue. Don't use Games Workshop glue. Revel Contact Professional. Any liquid poly cement is the best glue. Um, this stuff's fantastic. You get it from Element or any local stockist. I, I always use this. This is the best thing. Um, the, so you get your two war bands. They're in two different coloured plastics, which is quite nice because if you're playing a board game and you don't want to paint them, you've got two different colours, so that's clear on whose is whose. Um, uh, dice. Nice nice quality dice, different colours. 
magic dice, which are new to me because I've not played any additions with magic. Um, defense and combat dice. I think the green one's defense. And they've got the sort of the defense symbol, the dodge symbol. You've got the hammer attack. Uh, you've got the assist one. You've got the critical symbol. Um, so yeah, nice dice, rounded edges. I don't like square edges. Warcry, they started doing square edge ones. I really don't like those. Um, now, that's it apart from the decks. Now, the decks, the card decks, you have to excuse me. I've, I've unwrapped them. Quite interesting. So you get um, two rivals decks. Now, these are your, like, basic starter decks which you can use with any warband and you can mix your cards with them if you're playing um nemesis format which is a new format so you get a card which tells you the objective cards in it the power cards you've got a plot i don't know what plots are they weren't a thing uh, i guess that's a way of earning some points or victory tokens i don't know you get two types of decks. You get an objective deck and you get like a power deck. Now the objective deck, that's how you score your points, your glory. That's how you win the game. So the score and what you've got to do. Um, these are really important. They, these are basically your figures. In a way, if you've never played Underworlds, it's not really about killing the other person. You might have an objective to kill someone, but you do get glory for killing people. But these are kind of your what you're playing for. And when you build a constructed deck... They're really important. Um, the, this deck is just use it as is. So you just get this out, shuffle it, and play with it, and use any war band you want. Um, so if you've got an older war band and you want to use this, you can. Now, war bands also come with their own deck, <clears throat> which are themed, and they've got their own. This is These are the hero cards. I'll talk about this in a minute. They've got their faction symbol. So you've got your power and objective. Now, that also forms a rival's deck. So you just pick it out, play it. That's it. You don't have to deck construct. You don't have to worry. Now, I don't know how balanced they are. I don't know how... I think this is something that come in Beast Grave, where they started doing this. So when you bought a warband, you didn't need to construct decks. And that's a format called Rivals. It's very popular because there's no deck building. Um, and you just play the deck. Obviously, you do get a little bit limitation when you play competitively that... It's kind of almost like your entry level game, and that's how I would recommend playing it if you don't play it very much, uh, because you don't have to think, you don't have to prep. Um, now the next format is called Nemesis, and what you can do with that is you can take one of these extra decks, these rivals decks, and mix it with your deck to make a new deck. But you can only take one, so I'd have to take this one, which I think is Daring Delvers. So you would take Del Daring Delvers, those cards plus these cards, this means it's universal. They go in. Um, I'll talk about those in a sec. And then you've got power cards, which are like your your like instance for magic kind of thing, uh, or reactions. They're kind of like your spells. Upgrades, which make your fighters better, and they go on their cards. And then your objective cards, which is how you score points. Now, so the deck, if you're not into deck building... You can still play the game without doing any deck building. So don't let that put you off. Because if you don't like deck building, you can play it and it's viable and it's fun. And you can use the warband, take your deck, and you don't you can play instantly. You know, you can build your models in <coughs> 15, 20 minutes. Um, even if you don't glue them, you just get some clippers, cut them out, push them together, fairly straightforward, shuffle your cards and play. Now these are your hero, your your warrior decks, that gives you all their stats. So it gives you their movement, you know, what they roll, their attacks, their special rules. Now, every card's double-sided. You get inspir inspiring levels, so that's inspired. On the front, it tells you what you've got to do to do it. So these guys, it says you've got to score a critical, uh, or if this fighter supports someone who, who does a critical attack, flip him over, he gets better stats. You know, you end up with more wounds, or you might end up with a better attack, or you might have a better ability. They're all different. Every warband's got its own flavor. Um, I don't know what the, these guys look like. They're about criticals and support. I haven't read the other one because I'm really interested in these. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's good that you get the two decks, plus you get two warbands, plus you get all the tokens, everything you need. 
<clears throat> it is a little bit less than you used to get. You used to get like um you used to get like bags to put your tokens in and things like that. I mean it's not that important, but um yeah, I mean it's fairly good. Um good quality components, like I say. Um you get your card inserts, you get your boards, you get your rule book. Now the rule book, um it's a bit of a beast, actually. And it's a little bit more complicated than I remember. Now, I don't know if that's just because there's been a lot more stuff added. Sorry, I have to move all my hobby paraphernalia out of the way. So, but it's quite a lot. You've got pages and pages and pages. Now, don't let this put you off. If you're a board gamer, though, a 50 page rule book's probably pushing it. You know, it's sort of getting to infinity level, like board game, you know, like Corvus Belly type stuff. There are loads of really, really useful charts. Like this chart, if you're a visual person like I am, your combat sequence looks really complicated, but you declare an attack, you roll an attack, defense, determine success. Look at the chart, you go, I got no successes. Doesn't matter what they rolled, it fails. You know, you follow the arrows and it, it, it it's a flow chart. Uh, great idea. All their games should have these. It clears up so much stuff. Sequencing. You've got the turn sequence. All this stuff. Now, my only criticism, this stuff should be on a reference card that comes with your deck. Or at least in the box set. You should have reference cards for this stuff. Because honestly, who wants to get a rule book out? And you want it in your deck of cards. You want that reference card. You know, I want to see the turn sequence on a card. I want to see the combat sequence on a card. You know, then there's all these special rules. This is a glossary at the back, which is really nicely referenced. It goes, go to this page. So this rule book's really well written. Honestly, um, you've got your action phase. How does the turn break down? All the advanced rules are in box outs. Obviously, the art's fantastic. Um, you've got your activation, your move, your tokens, explain your attack, your combat sequence. This is more what I would call like your in-depth rules so normally when you when you're used to playing games um like board games especially stuff like um fantasy flight they would do like a quick start rules and then there'd be an in-depth one you know very typical things like star wars legion or or, or like imperial soul things like that they have like a basic rules and they have advanced rules they've kind of done that but they're kind of in amongst the rules where they're relevant which is good because <coughs> you don't really want to have like another page and have to flip between two things it's very clear. There's big headings. Finding something in this book is very easy. Um, I've only just quickly flicked through it. Now, there are some big changes to the rules, apparently. I have not read this. I'll be honest with you. I opened the box only like half an hour ago. Um, and I wasn't really planning to get into Underworlds again, but I'm, I'm going to give it another go. Some of the cool stuff, like your attack sequence and how reactions work, really interesting. Um, I think some of the diagrams make things really simple for people who are visual like me. Um, you know, it's a lot easier than reading words and hopefully it removes a barrier. Now, it would be a really nice um, direction for Games Workshop to head in with games like Age of Sigmar to have more examples and more structure to the rule system. Obviously, it reminds me a little bit of like magic and the stack and things like that. So how do you resolve things? So it should address a lot of the questions. So rules, if I was going to say complexity, if you're a board gaming group and you're not used to Games Workshop games or war gaming, I would say that it's quite a high level for a board game. It's once you've played a few games and you've read through things, it's fairly simplistic, but the mental load is high because you've got all the stuff on your cards, but you've also got the rules. Now, a lot of games, modern games, you have all the rules on the cards in front of you. You don't really need to refer to the rule book very much. That's one of the criticisms I'd have. The other thing I would say um, is it's a Games Workshop game, and I hope they support it better than they have done. So I'm going to go away from this now and talk to you properly um, and go to the website, because I think it's important to know where to go to see all of their stuff. So Games Workshop have the community website. If you don't know, it's Community Warcom. It's a great website. They have lots of articles you can search. They've got downloads and things like that. Now, there are some issues sometimes, sometimes out of date or links to the wrong thing. 
Um, but I wanted to say they do have a Underworlds website, and it is warhammerunderworlds.com. Um, and it's got your kind of like, what's a season of war? How do you play it? Where to go get it? Free rules, so you can download the rules. If it's all Narwood, but whether or not it's going to be Narwood, it, it just takes you to this page, and it's all Harrow Deep. So are they the rules or are they not the rules you've got a learn to play version there is a there is a two player quick like starter set and i think that's probably what these are but this hasn't been updated from 2019 this is the night vault rule so that's what i mean about the website being a little bit out of date now obviously the game like Norwood's not released yet so maybe that will change and it will be all of it will be tidied up but honestly it's pretty bad their their kind of where stuff is it's not very clear their website's kind of a bit trashy in my opinion um there's lots of articles about narwood you've got the box set you've got october narwood and rivals of never maze now rivals of never maze is literally just the war bands that are in never maze in a box set with the cards um so it's just like a cheaper box set i would just get the i would get the never maze box because you don't save an awful lot and you get the boards you get the tokens you get extra you know, it's just it's just a better box set um, but you can get there if you want interested in those warbands. They're amazing models, fantastic models. Um, there's a new warband coming in December. There's a new one in February, and then there's a new season, which is in six months. So basically, there's two more rivals decks. So that's a contained. I don't know what they call it. Sell season, a new season, but their seasons are six months. Now I still think that's too fast. I think it's too quick. I think they should be twelve months, but that's just up to me, is it? So. Um, they're doing an organized play push. They did these originally where they had these packs where you've got deck boxes, a cool trophy, just made out of shade glass, <coughs> which I think was the original, like the, the, the law behind the game, posters, alternate art cards, plastic tokens. I've actually got some plastic, like limited edition ones from going to a tournament back in the early days. Um, you know, and there's there's a, there's these grand clashes, and they're really good. If you get a chance to go to one, I think they're fantastic. Um, you normally play best two out of three, um, and you have build a deck, and there's rules about that, and there's organized play. Um, I I really would recommend going to a rivals one to start with, or Nemesis. I don't really like Relic. Um, Relic is everything. There's some banned cards, but you can play whatever. Um. I would say it's just way too much. It's for all people who've been playing a long time. It'd be a bit like the people into modern format for Magic. Um, so they talk about some rule changes. So one of the biggest things is movement has changed. So they're basically saying that previously, if you moved a fighter, that was it. So it was really easy to go. You can only move two hexes. You're not going to get to me. Now what you can do is move multiple times. So actually, this is a lot better because you can actually activate 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 the same fighter and actually move up the board quickly so if you've got an aggressive tooled up fighter you can you can use them and just the rest are just there to support um and they also about charging whereas if you made a charge you get an icon you can't activate again so you couldn't attack multiple times you charge and attack you couldn't and keep attacking whereas now um if every every surviving fighter has charged then um you can attack or guard if you're playing at a gaming club you want people to get into it you can actually just have multiple decks in your bag and take multiple war bands and go what war band do you want to play here's a deck and not worry about having to pre-construct them because i know that when um when i was used to work in a gw there's a guy really into blood bowl and he just turned up blood bowl teams and match pitches and just got people to play because you want to play a game i'll give you a game i'll run an intro and eventually there's a full-blown league and I guess what if you build it, it will come. Basically, if you want to play Underworlds in your gaming gaming club or gaming group, then then just promote, just buy a box, get a couple war bands. You know, if you get this and the rivals pack, that's four war bands. Normally, that's a good good number of people. Then you just go right. We've got enough to play. Let's go. Um, a Nemesis format is a new type, so you can basically mix with one of these two starting decks you get in the box and create a new nemesis deck so that's when you start building out and go let's have a bit more deck building i quite like the idea of that one and then relic is basically anything you want universal cards from anywhere um i think that's for more uh serious people who are into the game uh who've been into it from the day day one uh not really for me i think there's too much going on there 
um yeah so interesting so you can play your gnarwood in those ways so that's kind of the big thing about this now so that's gnarwood um if you're looking to get into underworld i think it's a good good jumping in point i will caveat that and say games workshop have set up a bit of a track record of not supporting their games and and hype and then it drops off a bit obviously underworld's been going for many years and i know that the uh, lead designer is very passionate uh, and a very i would say a very good uh, games designer from my point of view um i really think it's a very strong unique games workshop game out of all the games they make it's one of the best ones uh, i would definitely urge you to give it a go if you've not played it now let's address the statement on one of their articles which is the perfect game for your games night now i i have my own opinion on this i i'm not 100 percent sure it is the best it's good for your games group and that really will depend on your gaming group and what you play now my games group we do play a few adversarial we do have a wargaming background um some of us have played napoleonics other people played games workshop games in the past um we've either worked in the industry or done things so we're all what we would call i'd say war gamers and board gamers we're not just pure board gamers if you like adversarial tactical play games with a little bit of complexity this is a must game for you guys to give it a go I would say anyone who enjoys like um, Dice Throne, um, Destiny, those kind of things, those those adversarial games, you will really enjoy Underworlds. Um, if you can get past the hobby requirement, if you're not a hobbyist, and I'd say it's very easy to push fit your models together and not have to ever paint them. Um, and if you fancy branching out, you could, but honestly, you don't need to. If you're just a board gamer, you know, you just put them together and go. Um, obviously, I do believe that painting the models is quite easy, but I'm a hobbyist, so I would say that. Um, I would I would urge you to give it a go. Um, if you like cooperative multiplayer games, it's not for you. The multiplayer aspect of the game, if I remember, was bad. It's I don't think it's going to be any better. I can't see the issues being fixed with the rule changes. It might help, but I think the game is designed and balanced around a one versus one format. Um, if you do not like that type of play and you'd rather your gaming group play one big game or play together because you, people don't like losing, I would say don't play it. Now, what I found is in my gaming group, we have a couple of people who really like adversarial tactical play and some people who don't. Um, if you liked X-Wing, you will like this. X-Wing is a lot more open to multiplayer games. I think that um, this is less about the miniatures and more about tactical decision-making and the cards. And the miniatures are kind of there, but they're not... It's not about... It's not the same as going out and trying to shoot people down and it's not about fighting to the death. It's more about scoring objective points by doing things with cards. And the models are now used to do that. And there is a bit of combat. And there is some dice rolling. And that's <coughs> the other side of this coin. If you do not like random dice generators, <laughs> so, you know, you don't like randomness in your games because you like these really tactical card games, again, this is a blend. And that's why if you like to start with Destiny, because that was a blend of dice rolling, dice manipulation, and cards, then this is a really good game for you. Um, I would say that um, from my experience playing the game, I really enjoyed it. Uh, price point wise it's a little bit less accessible than it used to be uh, but i still think it's a good buy i mean a lot of board games are very expensive now um you're sort of like 50 60 pounds plus i would say it's very rare to get a good board game with this quality components for less than that um and i definitely think that i don't think it's it doesn't feel like you're being ripped off i think if it goes up any more you're going to start getting to the realms of why would i buy this when i can buy an 80 pound game with lots of models uh, but most board games have increased in price and the miniature quality is very high so if that's something you like and you like miniatures based board games then this is fantastic um so i hopefully you enjoyed my review of this now i will caveat it's my opinion um it doesn't mean i'm you know you're if you disagree with me that's completely fine it doesn't mean that i'm I, your, my points are more valid than yours or not i just wanted to record a video and talk about it because i do like underworlds so i do want to play it and uh, it'd be a real shame 
if Games Workshop, after this big push to reset um, and relaunch, fall flat um, and don't really push the game, don't update the resources, don't make sure the links aren't working, the PDFs aren't available, you know, they don't respond quickly to FAQs or, or updates. I, I really would like to see them maintain this game the, the same intensity that they're launching it with. I guess that's probably what I'm saying. And I'm I'm very skeptical that that will be the case because they've got a bit of a track record for kill team, kill team, kill team. And then, oh, next thing, curse city, curse city, curse city. Then next thing, you know, Necromander, Necromander, Necromander. Then Titanicus, Titanicus, Titanicus. Horus Heresy, Horus Heresy, Horus Heresy. It's whatever the latest thing is what they push. And then once it's out, it's there. And it's like, well, that's not, for a game like this, it needs to be more supported uh and and more attention given to it and i hope that games workshop will do that and i think they've they've done more of that with underwards than anything else and i think that's because of the team behind it um so i would say definitely give it a go uh, the models are fantastic quality of the box is great um and i am going to give it a, another go with my gaming group and see how it goes if we play it a bit and and you know we we pick it up i might revisit this and do another video on it and just give me my thoughts um it's a bit unusual for our channel to do something that isn't age of sigma but i will be branching out a little bit when i feel like it um just because i think it's close enough that you might uh you might be interested in this if you're also interested in age of sigma so uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you've played underworlds how you feel about it if you feel disenfranchised from it or you you feel like you are going to go back in or you've never played it let me know what your thoughts are if you play a game and you let us know how you feel about it uh be interested to hear what people say hopefully you've enjoyed the review and uh, we'll catch you all in the next one and uh, thank you all for watching